meeting of the Welcome to the October meeting of the Yarmouth Energy Committee. It's Tuesday, October 3rd. Uh, nowhere near Halloween, so we're not in costume yet. Uh, are there any members of the public who'd like to be introduced? There's nobody on the screen uh, other than committee members. I think she muted herself. Sandra, where are you? Are you in New Hampshire? Nope, I am here on Cape Cod. Oh. I go to I I'm going to Vietnam before I go to New Hampshire. So I got a oh. month. Joyce. Right. You're going to Vietnam? Yes. Hmm. But three weeks for a wedding. Wow. Joyce, you are muted. That's quite a destination wedding. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, with the iPhone, it turns out you have to go to a different screen and tap to unmute. Um, I'm trying to think what to do about our visitor. Um, assuming that um, our visitor can hear us, we'd love to have you unmute yourself and just say a quick hello. There's nobody. There's, there's nobody. nobody. There's only the six. Less that's a visitor. Oh, okay. Then let's go. Uh, I would like to turn this over to the Secretariat for review of the minutes. That will be Bob and Sandy both. <laughs> I sent out the minutes on the agenda, so hopefully everybody was able to look at Bob's notes and put the attachments with it. So I will make a motion to accept the minutes as written because I haven't heard from anybody to change anything, but. Um, Sandy, if I could just add one little amendment down at the energy topics at one Cape conference, I would probably um, on uh, the second to the last line of that paragraph, I would insert a the in front of open hearing process. But that's my that's my only quip. Okay. So would you accept that as an amendment to your to your motion? I will make a motion with the amendment of the Energy Committee okay. meeting minutes. Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, the minutes go down in history. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, nice job. Uh, our next uh, item, update on town energy news, if Amanda's present. I'm going to be very curious to hear about the water processing plant. Um, so maybe we'll make sure to get her next time um, to find out what uh, conservation energy efficiency uh, measures are being taken there. Uh, I don't see Amanda, though, so we'll skip over that for now. To some, um, some fun news, which is that the... Uh, uh, young people uh, in Yarmouth are going to be learning about energy in several ways. Um, one is an energy fair um, at the middle school, the intermediate immediate school, um, on October 30th. Um, our uh, education liaison, uh, Regina, was looking for help with that. There's a a teacher's advisory board for the Cape Light Compact of retired teachers who help with that. If anyone wanted to um, join in uh, with hosting, you know, a little table that demonstrates something um, in the intermediate school gym on October, October 30th, uh, you would have to go to a training session 
um, that's going to be October 24th and uh, October 26th. The time on those is 11.15 to 12. So think about that. And if you're interested, let me know. Um, the reason that there is a training session is this is a this is a sort of two-step thing that um, the teachers train the students. I mean, these aren't the teachers that they have for classes and grades um, in how to present the energy stuff. And then a teacher stands by at each booth while love, students over two different period uh, class periods uh, host each booth, including the, the static electricity booth, which is everybody's favorite because you can get wonderful pictures of yourself with your hair sticking out like Albert Einstein's. Anyway, if any of you are interested in that, feel free to get in touch with me um, and I'll send you further details on that. Um, in the meantime, also DY, also the intermediate school, um, there's uh, a teacher named Brian Spano who wants to do a power demonstration on October 6th. Um, it's kind of close. Um, that would be this Friday. So um, they he wrote, instead of writing Energy Committee, he wrote Maggie, thinking of the uh, teaching board, and wondered if anyone was available uh, to demonstrate some of the uh, energy centers. Um, he wanted people, if they were interested, to get in touch with him so that he could explain more about what he was trying to accomplish, if it was of interest. Um, he's uh, also grade five, as is uh, Regina. And so if any of you are interested, I'll give you Brian's email. Uh, it's according to the, uh, the DY formula, which is last name, first initial, and then at dy-regional.k12.mass.us. So in total, it's S-P-A-N-O-B at dy-regional.k12.mass.us. And you can tell him that you heard about it from Maggie Downey and, and Joyce Flynn. Um, he's a little um, skimpy on details, but it sounded to me since he was calling this a PD, like it was going to be an actual demonstration or a series of demonstrations on, on how to produce power. So if that's of interest, that does seem like a potential PR, uh, public relations, not personnel, um, Things, energy things in Yarmouth um, and Energy Committee in particular. Okay, so that's the news uh, from Regina. Um, the CAPE training session for the town's building and other staff uh, went on as expected today. Did any of you get to view it? I did. Oh, good. Sandy, would you like to say a few things about it? We had a motorist who was having trouble and um, rang our bell, and it was exactly the hour that that was happening. So, you know, my, my knowledge of it is haphazard. But I'd love to hear, you know, a little outline and then your, your analysis of how you think it might have gone. Um, they basically were talking about the codes for the um, green communities and for the um, option. Yes. And I thought that it went very well because I thought there was going to be a lot of dissension in it because everybody's saying that all these um, requirements and codes are going to cause people to um, have more costs to their building. But there were a lot of architects, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but there were a few architects that responded and there was someone from the um, uh, um, what's that, the human, um, what's the housing there for the, um, can't think of what the housing is, but they said that the costs were actually down and to have some of these um, energy, these, uh, solar ready homes being built are actually beneficial to most homeowners and help them. 
So I thought it went very well. There was a few technical um, problems, but overall it was um, worth listening to. Oh, good. Did you spot any familiar play, uh, people on the Zoom? Yes, I did. <laughs> any people from Yarmouth government? Um, I did not see anybody from Yarmouth government, but I didn't really look at everybody and pay attention either. Ah, okay. And you felt that the questions from people were seeking information and that they got the information that they asked about? I thought so, yes. Oh, good, good. Okay, it, well... Is, 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 go is go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I just yeah, I missed that, and I would like to watch it. Is there some way you, it can be watched again? Is it? Uh, I believe or, there's going to be a link sent out. Okay. Liz Argo might have that information. She might because she was there. Oh yeah, she's the one. Yes. Okay. And the good thing about this was it was um, being held um, by Lisa Sullivan, and so it was. Held, being held by the head of the Green Communities Program and showing how this stuff was not as hard as many builders kept saying it was. I don't know how many builders were in the audience. I'd be curious about that. But then the builders were putting pressure on the building departments that this was, this was all just too much. And I think the session hopefully calms some of that down because uh, it really, even though the uh, the advancement of the code that happens next summer is a bigger jump than in the past, it's all, it's all totally doable. S Sandy, was it uh, Bob Riley from Habitat for Humanity that you were describing as? Yes, thank oh. you, thank you. Couldn't think of it. <laughs> thank you very much. Sandy, was anybody there from Housing Assistance Corporation I don't know any of those folks, and I so I couldn't really tell you for sure. Oh, okay. I'll take. Liz, I'll Liz take might over. be able to answer that question since she was there. Yeah. Okay. Because that's a little um, island of resistance sometimes. Okay. Well, that's lovely. Um, we'll get that link from Liz and circulate it so everybody will have it to watch at their leisure. But you know, with power popcorn and, and a notepad because it'll all be educational. Um, so that leads us logically in, I think, to the uh, whole idea of uh, the decarbonize campaign that Barry's proposing. And uh, I think he has a lovely visual sense, which of course he does because he's in, an artist. And I was very impressed with his attachment with the use of photos and the use of colored text and the use of lots of white space so that people had to look at what you wanted them to look at. Barry, you want to talk about this? Sure. So um, the, formally, this is a, a campaign launched by the Cape Cod Climate Action Network, which is the um, primary grassroots arm of the Cape Cod Climate Change Collaborative. Um, it's got uh, participants from most of the towns. I mean, some of them uh, organized as volunteer climate action networks and some of them organized primarily through the town energy and climate action committees. Um, in Wellfleet and Truro and Chatham, I think, uh, the energy committee has now taken on that uh, title. Um, and particularly in the Outer Cape, you know, small populations, the town committees uh, are their primary um, advocates. Um, and, and, um, Falmouth and Chatham and Harwich, there are active climate action networks, so it, it varies across the Cape. And this, oh, you know, it, it is... Sorry, uh, uh, an information question. Sure. How far out does National Grid's pipeline go? Gas pipeline. I. It does not go out to the Outer Cape, but I. I mean, do, I don't really. Orleans. Know whether whether to, pardon. Orleans and Brewster. Do uh, any of us know off the top of our heads? Yeah. I, okay. I, no, no, I was just on page three of the 
of, of, of your uh, of your pamphlet and noticing that you were giving some free advertising to National Grid on energy assessments. And uh, no, th I mean, that this is an unfortunate feature of state policy in the last round of so that the, all these energy assessment and and um, incentives for weatherization are part of the um, energy efficiency charge on the yeah. bill and the Department yeah. of Public Utilities has to approve um, the energy efficiency plans of the utilities every three years. And in the last round, um, to the dismay of the compact, uh, which until then had been the, um, the agency that managed all of the energy assessments across the Cape, um, Somebody persuaded the DPU to require that gas heating customers get their assessments through National Grid. So the compact is prohibited from um, offering them to gas heating customers. Um, and it's something which the compact I, I, hopes to change the ground. Yeah, that answers a question for me. I was in a brief uh, discussion on next door about uh, RISE Engineering. I mean, it's crazy. Rise Engineering is the is the company that works uh, that does these assessments for both National Grid and uh, and uh, Cape Light Compact. And uh, I questioned one of the Rise Engineering fellows made a, a comment, uh, you know, saying saying something about National National Grid doing doing the assessments and 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 i i piped in that uh, that the, the compact no i said the comp you should go to the compact and he piped in and said no you should go to national grid <laughs> uh, so now that answers the question why yeah that i mean it's something we and the other energy committees in the cape should weigh in on the next time the three-year plan comes up but it's not something that that the compact thinks can be changed before the next three-year plan yeah. goes in, and um, there is. But there's, there's no, no difference. In, that, there's no difference in the quality of the assessments because they're they're being done by the same same engine company, National Grid and Cape Light Compact, are both contracted with Rice Engineering. Right, but there the, there is a sense that. Um, specifically coming out of the energy cafes, which is a project that the Faith Communities Environmental Network is doing with um, a state grant to, to try to promote use of the energy assessment system by lower income households who get you know higher incentives, um, but, but have utilized the program less, you know, to, to a smaller degree. So they're doing outreach, um, you know, person to person, mostly in faith communities. Um, and they have found that it takes a lot of follow up, even when somebody signs a card saying they want an assessment. Um, th there's a fair amount of, of hand holding needed to encourage low income households to actually take advantage of the opportunity. And that it has been harder to follow up with National Grid customers. Um, because while the compact will reach out to somebody who said they want an audit and be proactive, National Grid, you really have to call and get them. Uh, <laughs> and it's that's, not, that's, it's that's not that's they're not, they're not as eager to, you know, reduce consumption. That's what the, next step is, the, the next step is to cut off National Grid. It's going to get gas service <laughs> and, and install heat pumps. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, you know, to put put it put it in your book for a future advocacy need. Um, but I, I assume the compact will alert us when it you know when it's time. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the the prohibition on the compact from covering um, heating customers using gas is uh, a a war that started with a national grid um, initiative about seven years ago. And so the compact has been fighting this, filing one thing after another uh, with appeals. But what happened was the appeal process wound down. 
And uh, I think that we have a much more receptive DPU now. And um, there's a lot of scrutiny on the DPU and how it deals with municipal aggregators. And so there may be some relief there. Uh, but I'd mentioned, Bob, in connection with uh, the point you made about there's no difference. Actually, um, it's it's not just the kind of um, the follow up so that people get service. There is a dirty secret um, about the service, which is there are some people uh, who are contractors who've caused problems in the past and then not made them good when they they were given the chance. And so the compact with its supervision of RISE for heating stuff um, would uh, not allow a couple contractors here on Cape that um, um, that RISE still allows. Um, one, a local one here on the Mid Cape. And then there was the exciting um, story of uh, the audit in Sandwich in a house where uh, even though the auditor had been told to step carefully in the attic from beam to beam, ignored that, stepped on the insulation and came down and nearly clobbered the lady who was sitting on her couch underneath. <laughs> there are some major flakes out there. But I guess <laughs> anyone who has been through the whole solarized experience sort of knows that, you know, um, contracting is a, a tricky area. But I, clearly I, I, the pipeline contact did this better. A so, question. I have gas heating and now if I want to get a new another assessment all the earlier ones have been done through cape light compact do i now have to go to the national grid or am i allowed to continue going to cape light compact i don't know the answer i, I suspect you have to go through national grid but um i i had had an assessment through the compact a few years ago and i called rise to see if they would come out again <clears throat> and they told me that basically since i had um completed all the recommendations they made because i was getting heat pumps in the house that they could send me a certificate of completion then that was all i needed so i didn't wind up having to go back through um national grid um, but um yeah, um, if you called the compact at this point, Bob, um, you would be graciously received and a very polite voice would break the news to you that you were going to have to go through a national grid. <laughs> you can still get your electrical stuff and anybody who's um, heating with oil or propane can still get the heating stuff, but yeah. uh, not gas customers. And the shame is that there are people out there and, uh, you know, I know lots of them who, if it takes one call to get an audit for everything, are much more likely to do it than if it takes a series of calls to different places. So, so now the assessments are going to be of, of different things? Yes. Now, um, customers would, uh, would call the compact um, for electrical things or if they were, and for the whole package, if they were propane or oil heating customers, uh, but gas customers have to make the two separate calls. Um, you've got your grid call and you've got your compact call. And then it's two separate inspections, um, two separate reports, two separate suggested to-do lists and um, two different institutions to help you track your incentive paperwork and you know which one I think does the better job on that. That's crazy. So if I can go back to the, the decarbonized campaign. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I so in, 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 in June, the uh, Climate Action Network decided to launch it. It hasn't really um, launched yet. We have been putting together this brochure, which is really the um, theme book for the campaign. The focus is on, first of all, get, making sure people have had their energy assessments and implemented the recommendations because saving energy is the easiest and you know best payback improvement people can make. But then, you know, um, replacing furnaces with heat pumps, 
replacing gas cars with electric vehicles and adding rooftop solar power where it's where it's feasible. Um, so those kind of four four legs of uh, of the campaign, and it's designed to do outreach to the whole resident population of the Cape. Um, and we've been we've been catching up as government programs continue to improve. So since we decided to launch the campaign, um, the state and the feds came through with major incentives for used electric vehicles. Um, the feds now offer a $4,000 tax credit for a used EV. The state now offers a $3,500 rebate for a used EV or 5,000 for income qualified households. And, you know, since a huge majority of the population never buys new cars. The, the campaign is really focusing on uh, educating people that there are used EVs out there. I mean, you can go online to any of the used car markets and find local dealers who have used EVs that with not that much mileage, you know, cost under 20 grand. You can, you can find used EVs that basically would be, you know, you can't get back more than the cost of the car, but you could get pretty much the entire cost of the car between the state rebate and the federal tax credit. So it is an enormous jump in feasibility for the majority of, of drivers who never buy new cars. Our, our premise is that folks who are prosperous enough to shop for new cars and smart enough to have picked an electric vehicle don't really need that much help from us. Um, that a market can yeah. help people find their new cars, but the lower income households who have assumed that EVs are out of reach, um, as enough EVs have entered the cycle that there are now used EVs around, and the government's finally just this summer. I did it, the, the last one happened in the beginning of August. The state um, announced their their more EV rebates for used EVs um, it, it is way more realistic and way less something that only works for rich people. Yeah. Um, how much is this increased demand going to jack up the prices of uh, used EVs uh, though? I, I, my son has been looking at uh, buying a used EV and uh, he's, he's, He's not convinced yet that he's going to get a good deal. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I was like looking at local inventories just in, in August, you know, in preparing the brochure. And, and I was surprised by how many EVs are out there. I mean, it's not, it wouldn't necessarily be the car I wanted to buy, but um, I think most households are in a position where. Yeah they're looking for something affordable. And I was only looking at low mileage deals, um, but I assume most, a large portion of drivers never buy a low mileage car because they just, you know, no, no money. No. So. Um, I've, I've never bought a low mileage car. I, I'm a great believer that cars are for transportation and not, not uh, lifestyle, uh, proclamations uh you're normal <laughs> um, so the other thing we are now waiting to for on is that we just learned really beginning of september that um there are two new solar loan programs which seem likely to happen fairly soon the state is creating a new solar state solar loans program at, we are told, um, this, is, this is from Dan Wolf, um, that who's now the legislative affairs head of the collaborative, that the state is about to offer zero interest financing for, for rooftop solar for income qualified customers. Um, they, they had abolished the state solar loan program, I don't know, it's, three or four years ago. And I, I had been concerned that since, since even since Solarized ended, uh, there are no longer um, 
smart <clears throat> renewable energy credits available that were available at the beginning of Solarize because we've used up the, the money. And, and so on, at least on Cape Cod, you no longer get that support. And interest rates on home equity solar loans from Cape Cod 5, which is the main lender, were up to 8.75% when I checked yesterday. So that the finance, the the financials of getting solar weren't nearly as attractive as they were when Solarize was was operating um, because most people are going to have to borrow the money and that money's gotten way more expensive and there's less of a state incentive. So these new financing programs feel critical to being able to honestly promote solar as, as a money saving strategy. Um, so for income qualified households, the new state program is going to make a huge difference. Um, hasn't been announced yet. Um, we're, we're digging this week into what we can find out about when it's going to happen and what the details are. But the other big thing which could be available to all households is that Cape Light Compact finally got approval for a grant from the Rural Energy Systems arm of the Department of Agriculture to offer subsidized financing, so lower low interest solar loans for all customers. Um, and um, we're also trying to, waiting on the details of that. I've got a uh, call with Maggie Downey on Thursday. Uh, she thought she'd have more information by then after a meeting she was holding tomorrow. Um, but so we're trying to not actually publish this brochure until we we learn what the solar financing opportunities are going to be, because it is, in my view, going to make a huge difference in how practical it is for homeowners to um, add rooftop solar. And that's pretty critical for a lot of homeowners. Heat pumps make a lot more sense if you're supplying your own electricity than if you're buying it from the grid. Um, yeah. A, a, a question on on the heat clean and go solar pages you have listed some actual companies um they are not complete lists uh, is that going to cause any problems uh, so the there's, there's, i mean uh, the, the pro we're trying to make this practically useful so figuring out if, if I'm a homeowner, I'm not like somebody who knows a whole lot about this stuff. Who do I call? And we thought that um, giving, identifying local installers who we trusted um, was the most realistic step to actually get from thinking about it to getting an installation. Um, uh, on solar, we listed all all four Cape solar installers who do any significant number of installations. So um, those are the four that actually operate, are based here on the Cape. They're based on the Cape and they, they did yeah. enough installations to be substantial players. There, yeah. There's okay. one or two, like we didn't include clean energy. Um, can't remember their last name because they really only did a cup, a handful of, jobs over the last three years. So we looked at the state uh, database on all the all installations on the Cape um, and decided the, to... Yeah, for the heat pump one, the only recommendation I might make to change since there are a lot more companies on the Cape that, uh, you know, uh, just regular heating and plumbing companies that... So, so the, the, the source of that list was um, I asked Maggie Downey to ask her person who actually works on um, their heat pump programs, you know, if, if, if it was your family, you were looking for a local installer, who would you go to? And those were the on Cape installers that they came back and recommended. Um, there, there is a much longer list of people who are formally qualified to to do the installations that qualify for state uh, rebates. Um, but particularly given our experience here, 
<laughs> with Solarize, um, I felt like we should narrow it to installers who we had some reason to think were were reputable and provided good service. Um, yeah, no, the only thing that I would add was something the inspectors call, call your regular heating company or and then refer them to this list. In other words, you know, I mean, this is partly maybe personal bias. So I, I had done just that when I started thinking about heat pumps last year. I called Murphy's, which has always meant, you know, maintained our furnace. Um, and and their service, you know, they fixed problems that I thought were pretty sophisticated. Their, their tech guys are, are great. But I spent two hours last year with their sales manager asking for a quote on a heat pump system never got it and and you know when we had technicians here doing work on the furnace told them about it they said oh we're, we'll talk to them we'll get so never got back to me and i've heard similar stories about robies and i think the big comprehensive heating and plumbing companies aren't the best service providers on no no i i agree with all that but what i'm thinking of is more of the 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 as the, the pr aspect of it will you be antagonizing some of these companies that you haven't listed like robies uh my, my heating guy, company does i've had them come and and do me do an estimate for me uh on heat pumps and and uh, they're reasonably competitive. Uh, I don't think that they. I'm. You know, I'm not sure how many they do, but they were ready to, you know, come up with a, with with with. Did I just a, freeze or did you? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I think Barry froze. Hi. You moved, Barry, so it's working again. It, I'm so, <laughs> I, I lost Bob uh, after he said uh, he called his regular heating guy and got an estimate. Yeah, exactly. Now, now I, I mean, I, I am responsible for the heating and cooling of four for housing units because of a family trust. And uh, I use these people regularly. And uh, so, you know, I thought I would start off with them. But, uh, and the company is Braga, uh, or Braga. Uh, and, uh, you know, they gave me, they, they gave me an estimate. I haven't gone anywhere else. Uh, because even there, we we have problems because the houses are in a trust. It's getting the rebates and stuff. Uh, uh, I think you. I think the certainly the tax credits go to a go go to a, an individual, uh, and uh, so I haven't gone any further with it. But uh, it, it just occurred to me that there are other companies now out there trying to get the, the business. Uh, I mean, if you if you come down Willow Street and turn right, there's a, a place a couple doors down called Ductless. Uh, <laughs> that, that, I mean, <laughs> they might get a... I don't know how good they are, but they're there. <laughs> At well, least I think they do miss a point. Oh, Bob, I was going to say, um, you know, the Cape Flight Compact has a whole, um, I mean, even though they're not doing the inspections anymore, um, they have a whole list of the contractors and the contractors for the heating um, heat pumps have to meet certain criteria. Like our guy, Wayne, uh, because he was in the in touch with the compact because of the Solarized Plus project was one of the first to do that. So if you do that, um, it's a bit of vetting right there, and you're on the compacts list. So I think I would 
always tend to get someone from the compacts list or if the, there was a um, heat pump guy that I wanted to work with, I'd suggest that he register with the compact. It's not like an arduous process, but it establishes a, a kind of solidity that, you know, is nice to have in contracting. Yeah. Uh, no, I, but, the, I, I, but the list uh, is very long. And so, yeah, you know, either you're set, you're basically giving people a link to the whole compact directory of um, authorized dealers that doesn't feel like it helps anybody get closer. Yeah, it's too long. It's it's worse than being too short. <laughs> and so I, I I thought that asking somebody who you know has seen the whole field or who do you trust? Um, <laughs> so I, I um, was the best way to narrow it down to a to a finite list and and be fairly confident that whoever, if you if you get one of those folks to come out, they'll give you the straight scoop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we should try to interrupt less because Barry is trying to, to give a, um, an organic presentation here about how- No, no, this, not, this, is not, this is not a canned spiel. I mean, it, 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 I've kind of, the, the, the thrust of the campaign is what the brochure lays out uh, questions make sense. Um, the The next step is beginning to figure out the outreach strategy. What we've mostly talked about is trying something different from the forums that have been already offered. Like the state, the state reps did a clean energy tour um, and had meetings in Yarmouth and Barnstable. Oh, I think it was over the summer. This is the project Dylan Fernandez spearheaded. And, you know, they, they were good presentations. Each of them wound up with 15 or 20 residents at each of four or five meetings. Our, our um, judgment is that most people don't go to meetings to learn about complicated stuff. That it's just that that's a that's a lifestyle characteristic which is limited to um, <laughs> a, a fairly narrow portion of the population, and that portion is probably the ones who already most know the most about this stuff. So the challenge is how to reach the rest of the folks who don't, you know, go to webinars and you know educational forums and are talking about basically social events with information available Oktoberfest mm -hmm. with a band um, you know tr trying to create events with food and music that that are fun and you know there'll be maybe a short speak speaker and a table with brochures and people circulating trying to have con you know have conversations with the people who attend but foreground the um, fun rather than make it like going to school. Um, and I, you know, it's partly inspired by Joyce's pizza at Solarize events. Um, which, which, by the way, were greatly the idea of other people, especially one committee member who insisted there be pepperoni pizza, naming no name. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you know, I, I think about sort of replicating that. You know, do we do, would we here think it would work to organize a you know an event at the senior center um, with pizza and some entertainment and then some information? Yeah, I I haven't been around the side. Uh... Of of course, it would be. I mean, this is a Cape wide thing, and you you'd want to do them at a series of 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 centers. Uh, and, and one thing I have noticed is that the the level of activity varies very greatly from from senior center to senior center, uh, and. Uh, 
uh, and also the personnel. I mean, the, the Yama Senior Center, when Lisa was the outreach uh, coordinator, Lisa Noferi, was very, very active with energy stuff. I mean, she was always organizing energy stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But since her, she's no longer there, I haven't yet met the, the new one, uh, but in in the milestone, the publication, I haven't seen one energy event in the six months or so that she's been on, on the job. Maybe if I went over and tried to light a fire uh, mm -hmm. there, things would warm up a bit. Uh, or she might have her fire extinguisher uh, ready. You know, in a way, Bob, I think you and I um, are part of the non-happening here because Lisa would always get in touch with one of us and say, well, can we get somebody from the compact to come and talk? Or exactly. Can we get something going? And, you know, I confess I have totally relied on whoever was over there. I felt so bad about Lisa leaving that I didn't feel maybe all that enthusiastic. But, um, you know. Yeah, but we, we can't blame we Lisa. Go. We can't blame Lisa. Lisa's leaving on the person that replaced her. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, I mean the building. You know, you just. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and, and we might, could we convince uh, CVEC maybe to have an event there when, uh, when the solar, uh, when the solar roof goes online? Uh, I mean, would that be the kind of event that we could then use for, you, you you know, also Barry's program here, uh, make that uh, make that the inside part of the event because obviously the the solar roof is, is sort of an inanimate object sitting there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you know, have sort of an inauguration and and then and then have Barry's organization do a spiel or, or however you're going to do these things in senior centers. Maybe mm -hmm. even that, that sounds like a great idea, but I, I want to like, this isn't, um, I, I, it's not ideally, a one event thing. Ideally, this isn't going to be something which, ha which flows just through the Cape Cod climate action network. This is on the ground in every town going to be the local energy committees and yeah, no. networks. And, and, you know, I was going to say, this feels like it is the implementation of the um, energy committee long-term operating plan. I mean, it, it is the, it is. Yeah, exactly. I, I think, I, I, I think they hit the nail on the head uh, on that, on that one, I, I, so, the, 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 so, I have a so, question about an upcoming event and whether it could be used. I mean, nobody goes to uh, town meetings for fun, but we do have that evening event on November 7th. So we could use um, energy committee to get, um, it's usually an inside the building table for strictly, um, leaflets and that sort of thing but if we wanted to have refreshments oh uh, we would uh like from the activist um uh decarbonized group we could get an outside table and that would be much freer and and you'd be less likely to be trampled by people coming in because people would be stopping especially if it were a nice evening on the way in and some kind of handheld food, you know, carbs before you go in there for hours, um, might add a bit of fun. Not good. Uh, can't you can't do it, Joyce. Can't? No food or drink, no food or drink in the auditorium. No, 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 no. This is outside, outside the building. Oh, I I I don't know. You know, so people people will arrive a lot of them without supper if they're typical of us. And then they'll bring it inside, and that won't be good. No, we'll we'll be very clear. It has to be something <laughs> smallish, like cookies or you know. Rice, rice, it, it, can't, it can't be something lunchable. It, it has to be snackable. 
As a George. facility manager, I right. highly dis discard. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, you're talking to a former facilities manager here. <laughs> Much as I love my cookie, I... <laughs> We'd, we'd get dark chocolate for you, Sandy. <laughs> anyway, I was just wondering, Barry, if that posed some kind of opportunity with members of the community who are more likely, if they're going to the special town meeting in the fall, to be people who are involved and liable to do stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, I think, you know... Ideally, we'll be taking advantage of every opportunity that shows up to get information out to people. And that sort at, at a minimum, if we've got the brochure published by then, it'd be something the it'd be great if the Energy Committee was handing it out at its table. Um, uh, Are you going to be making a, a also a electronic version like Clean Energy Center has all of these? Uh, uh, documents that you, you you know you just you just call them up uh, maybe in a slightly different well, format. Yeah, I mean, we will. Th there will be a decarbonized website inside of the uh, Cape Cod Climate Change Collaborative website. Okay. Um, so because that, that one of the things when I looked at this thing is is this is is I I, I periodically post something on next door about energy uh it, it it i think the last time it was uh when when the rates the rate change was coming up last uh, june uh, you know I, I i i made some sort of a posting and uh, you know when i saw this uh, document i saw oh this would be an electronic version of this would be perfect to post on on next door you know there you know, there are a couple thousand people who, who, who were on that for the, for our, our part of the Cape. Uh, I may be well, that, exactly. That's, that's also great. I mean, I, 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 I we obviously want to be active on social media in addition to creating physical events. Um, I created a Facebook page just to, to experiment. Um, so there is a decarbonized Facebook page. Um, but it's, it's it says de decarbonize de de Cape Cod. Yep. Okay, I'll look at it. Um, Maybe I'll try it right now. But it's you know it's it's pathetic because I you know I have not been consistent about posting or getting other people to post, so it's pretty um, inert. And I think to actually be good at this we've got to find some folks who actually like being on social media and energize the, you know, the, the sites. Cause um, I, I hadn't been on Facebook for probably two years when I created the page, but um, I know what you're supposed to do. I just not the right one to do it. Hmm. Clearly though, you've done a lot of work and we're all very grateful to you for that. Um, you know, the conceptual stuff as well as the uh, um, the photos and the um, ideas about design. My, my particular favorite was the EV photo that had the, you know, the price slash and then the two, the federal and state incentives added on. I thought that was really effective. And and yeah, the one. And more feedback is welcome. This is still work in progress. Um, hoping to to settle it once we get the information on the solar financing options, but um, but so far it's it's still open for input. Oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> but I, no, think, I think we're out of we're we're we're, we're, we're uh, running past time, and it, you know I'd I'd hope we'd put this on the next agenda as well for brainstorming about how what we actually do um, in in Yarmouth. So. Okay, I'll put that on the agenda, and you anticipate having flyers by then that could go out on the seventh. 
you know, I, don't, I just don't know. It depends whether we can get enough information this week um, on the um, on the solar loans. And mm -hmm. we, uh, I've got Jim Wolf chasing Dan Wolf to see what he, we can find out about the state. And we're talking to Maggie mm -hmm. on uh, Thursday. And if if we know enough to say what's coming, it doesn't necessarily need to actually already be in place because people were, you know, as we know, getting solar projects, it takes some time from starting the conversation with an installer to actually having a proposal that you need to finance. Sure. So you have, you've got 35 days before town, town meeting. Yeah, no, so we, we hope so. Don't just can't promise. Okay. Okay. Well, um, on that note, why don't we uh, jump into compact developments, which is um, mainly involved with some very good brainstorming with the uh, uh, CAPE delegation. And we do find them very sympathetic. And um, certainly um, Julian Sear, who follows many different serious issues big time, um, has this on his agenda and has asked if there's anything else he can do from what he's already done. Uh, next compact meeting is a week from tomorrow, 2 p.m. at the Cape Lake Compact. Um, that puts us on to the Solarize Plus Yarmouth developments. I don't think there are any. Um, I correspond with people with their questions. I've been waiting um, to find out CEC and SunPower availability for that meeting that they want with customers. And that is potentially a problem of confusion with anything um, with decarbonized Yarmouth that would happen the same month. And you would say, well, Joyce, what month is that? Well, I was trying to get... Um, get CEC to have it before the Yarmouth Seaside Festival, which is next weekend. So I'm no longer sure that it'll happen in October. So there we are. Um, the, uh, the customers are in touch. Um, I did hear uh, through Sandy of one uh, customer pair that broke my heart who have um, apparently resistance electric heat and who had planned finances very carefully and are now paying hundreds of dollars every month on their electric bill. Um, so I really, um, I'm really concerned that this is all taking so long. I mean, not to depress you all, but really, I mean, given that the, the hard stuff about agreeing to do it has been done, I really wish it could move along. Mike, you want to add anything on that? I don't have anything to add, uh, Joyce. I guess yep. uh, it, the only thing I've been doing is providing you with uh, my old Excel files on all of the customers and what they've audited and everything else. So, yeah. And may I say, Mike, that your record keeping, um, impeccable as it is, is doing the job. I mean, that really made it possible for CEC, which was advocating for the customers with SunPower, to get a sense of who was where and how many people were involved and all that, because it also made it possible, although I followed up with phone calls just to double check, to distinguish the customers in Yarmouth who were SunPower customers separate from Solarize from the ones who were in the Yarmouth Solarize program. So, I mean, that is that is no small thing. And I'm sure it's occupying no small part of your laptop's memory. And I'm very appreciative. Yeah, I do have quite a list of uh, documents out of there. <laughs> well, Mike, while we've got you uh, talking here, do you have anything you want to say about the... Um, the long-term operating plan and its its possible relationship uh, in terms of sharing goals with uh, the uh, decarbonized Yarmouth group. Hmm. Um, last meeting, didn't we uh, 
kind of decide that you give me until January to get this all figured out. <laughs> okay. Okay. I see, well, I see the are lovely. <laughs> Since I won't be going to Maui until I think to January 17th. Uh, so I'll be here for the uh, board meeting in January and um, maybe I'll be prepared to make some kind of a presentation at that time. Okay. Okay. So Mike, how about if we expect you to zoom in for the November and December meetings, but I will cross this absolutely off as an agenda item until January. Oh yeah. Fair? I plan to be zooming in. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. But um, in the meantime, we can be working with Barry doing the kinds of things that uh, will be part of the operating plan under the guise of the decarbonized plan. I love it. Don't don't yeah. you love that we have two wings? <laughs> okay, are there member announcements or suggestions for future agenda items? I'm sound like it. Are you still there, Joyce? She's on mute. Um, I have to. I have to tap to speak, and then it. Uh, I have to tap with done speaking. But sometimes it seems to decide I'm done speaking before I am. Um, we. Uh, we. If we don't have any items, which we didn't hear any. Um, can I get a, um, a a motion of some sort to end the meeting? I, I move that we adjourn. I second it. Okay. Is there discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Laugh, laugh. No. Okay. Well, Thank you, everyone, um, and uh, see you at November meeting and also uh, then at town meeting um, a few days after that. And enjoy this wonderful weather. Joyce, between now and then, you ought to get upgraded to the 21st century. <laughs> oh, my Joyce, so we gonna, are we going to have the option? It's a month old. Joyce, are we going to have the option of meeting in person for the November meeting at the school at you know, Cindy, I really appreciated that you um, that you pursued that, but they weren't able to give you an answer right away, right? So you've waited two no, days. No, I, I have an answer. Oh, you do? Oh, yes. Okay. We have the conference room, which is right in the office area, and we'd be able to, you know, with your. Um, Zoom hosting, we'd be able to get it up on the town Zoom for the for history. Yes, excellent. Because I'm going to bring my computer, and I just have to um, hook up to their Wi-Fi. So I'm I'm just waiting for the password. They haven't sent me that part yet, but Sandy, that's wonderful. Um, I I accept wholeheartedly, and if anybody would like to. Uh, uh, attend in person. That's a great opportunity. And uh, obviously, it would be really good, especially since we're going to be politically um, pushing on energy agendas. It would be really good if we all were at town meeting. So this would be a nice stop on the way in, um, which might be very rewarding. So it will be a hybrid meeting when the next time. Yes, if anyone is 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 out sick, definitely Zoom. But but try to come in person, even though our our mode now is Zoom generally, because this is a unique opportunity, and it would also be um, right at town meeting, and we would adjourn and go into town meeting. The conference room, providing that there's not a lot of public um, um, attendance, is quite large, so we can even be separated away from one another if we're in that room too. Excellent. It sounds like you've really thought this through. And and the chances that a member of the public would be
be able to find us in the conference room. I suspect they'll be tuning in by Zoom if they're d deciding to visit. Yep. Well, we can we can put a sign on the door if we want. But okay. little no, season, we we shall absolutely do little that. Little Caesar will be there to attack like Duffy. What? I said, little Caesar will not be there to attract Mike Duffy. Oh, we always do better than little Caesar, oh. you know. <laughs> and any old pizza will do, Bob. You and I on TV. <laughs> uh, if, if, theoretically, if theoretically there were pizza, it, there would be a vegetarian and a pepperoni choice. Yeah. No, I'm. I, I, we are now a one-car family, and and Tuesdays are are not a day when we have a car at home. Um, so, I would very much like to see the new school. I haven't seen the new school, so if 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 I could find a ride from somebody, I would uh, I would gladly attend. Mike, are you going to be in town? You two are both over in Yarmouthport. Uh, I mean, as far as I know right now, but things can change, you know, when you're, yes. when you're a working person. <laughs> when, when, when you... I, I, I realize there could, there could potentially be a, you know, a nuclear fission emergency. So we do allow for that, but not fission fusion. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, well, then that's that's a, a lower priority of danger. Maybe you could give Bob a ride. Oh, sure. I anyway, give why, don't, why don't you two touch base and see if that's possible? And and Bob, if it's not and the ride continues, you know, to be an obstacle, we'll remove that somehow. Okay. Okay. I'd be, I'd be happy to give you a ride, Bob. Thank you very much. Okay, and if not, figure we'll get someone else to. So don't don't be concerned. But you can still use it as an excuse to have the car that night if you, if you choose. No, no, my my daughter. We we have this arrangement where she works over in Hyannis, and two days a week uh, we take her to work, and then three days a week uh, uh, she has the car, and Tuesday's one of her. Our days. Oh, uh, okay. Well, um, but, uh, we might we might be able to change that as well. Okay. Well, so transportation issues to be continued, but other yes. than that, we're we're I guess all done. Have a lovely October. Happy Halloween, everyone, and uh, see you at the beginning of next month. All right. Good night. Bye. -bye. Take care. Thank Bye. you to Sandy for hosting.